Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to create dotted and dashed lines inside of Photoshop. <laughs> In the 18 years I've been running Photoshop Cafe, one of the most requested tutorials has been creating dotted and dashed lines and shapes inside of Photoshop. For a long time, people have struggled with this. In fact, before CC, Photoshop didn't really have the ability to do it natively. But now it does, but people are still a little bit confused on how it works. Well, I've got two tutorials for you here. First of all, I'm going to show you how to use the tools properly inside of Photoshop CC. And then I'm also going to show you another way that we did it before Photoshop CC. This works in Photoshop CS6 and before. But even if you're a CC user, there's some cool things with this that you can't necessarily do with the new tools. So I encourage you to watch this entire tutorial. And I'm curious, which one are you? Are you on Photoshop CC? Or are you using a version before Photoshop CC? Drop a comment. Love to know. All right, let's start by creating just a simple dotted line. So we're going to grab our line tool here and you'll notice it there underneath the rectangle. This is in CC 2018, by the way. And then what we're going to do is there's three options, pixels, paths, and shapes. We're going to use shapes. And with the shape selected, we are just going to click and drag down. Now I'll hold the shift key and that will constrain it. And now we're getting a line there. Okay. So we've got two options here. We've got the stroke and the fill. So I'm going to grab the stroke and I'm going to change this to red and then I'm going to grab the fill and I'm going to turn it off. And now we'll see this. Let me change the thickness of this stroke just by clicking there. Notice we can change that thickness. Now it seems a little bit confusing. Okay. There's a couple of things now. Here's where I'm going to clear up the confusion. So the first thing you need to understand is that we're applying this line, the dotted line, the dash line, to the stroke, which is the outline, not the fill. So if you keep trying to do it in the fill, it's not going to work. So we're going to be looking at the stroke. Okay. So why is it 26 pixels across, but we're not seeing 26 pixels. That's because our width here is at 11. So if we change our width to 26 and then go back there, now we can see the full width. So this is the width of our shape that we're drawing. And this is the width of our stroke. So now they match. Okay, so if we click on here, you'll see we've got a solid line, we've got a dashed line, and we've got a dotted line. And notice it's working because our thickness here is matching there. If we drop it down to say 12 here, notice now we've got a double layer. Have you noticed you have that problem? So here's the solution. It's simple. We set our width over here under the width and height because it actually looks at it as a rectangle, even though it's a straight line. And we set it to the same distance, 26. So if they match, it's going to match there. All right, so let's go down to our options so we can change the spacing. If you notice this, we've got a dash and a gap. So the dash is zero, which is actually our dot. And then the gap is two. We can make the gap bigger. We can make it four. And if we do that, notice it's going to go like that. So let's do another zero for the dash, four for the gap, zero for the dash, four for the gap. And notice that it's kind of doubling up. Well, why is that? Isn't that kind of weird? Well, this is what we need to do. We need to just kind of tweak this a little bit. So sometimes we just go under our size. Let's just click OK to apply these stroke options. And then we're going to go under our size and we just got to kind of tweak it a little bit sometimes. Because what's happening is it's trying to double as I demonstrated earlier on. So you've got two overlapping ones and they're not necessarily aligning. A better way to demonstrate this is to create a rectangle and I'll show you. So if we create this rectangle, you'll see there's our dotted areas there. Now, if we take our height of our rectangle and we drag this down, let me drag this down to say 10. Now we see we've, we're doubling up. Let me zoom in here. You can see that we're doubling up now. And that's because basically that line, is the same kind of thing as a rectangle. So what we want to do is select it. Now we've gone away. We've selected a different one. How do we get back there? Okay. So how do we select it? Well, what we want to do is grab our path selection tool and make sure if we click here, we get the rectangle. If we click here in the layers panel, we get our line and we can go in and we can change these options. So let's go to our dashed line. So let's choose more options. 
And once again, if we want a bigger gap, let's change that to four and click OK. And you're going to get that bigger gap. You could make it, you know, 20 if you want to have less dashes. OK, so let's just do that one to four and four. And we can see we've got our dashes there. Now, there's a couple of things we can do on these. Let me just click OK first to apply it. And I'm just going to hit Control 1. And I want to go up to 100% just so we can see it nice and clearly. OK, if we turn our stroke options, we've got different options here. So if we choose our caps, what we can do is we can change the shape there. So now they're rounded, pill shaped. And that's why if we drop this dash down to zero, it becomes a dot. That's basically essentially how it works. OK, the next thing I want to show you is some of the options that we have. And I'm going to create a box to do that. So let's just grab our little box tool here, a rectangle tool, and I'm just going to click out and I'll hold the shift key and that will give us a square. Okay, we've got that square. What I want to do is I just want to uh, zoom in. So I'm going to double click the magnifying glass and that's going to bring me all the way into 100%. And then we can see the way this looks. Okay, so let's select it and look at the options. So let's grab the path selection, make sure that rectangle, and we can hide it and show it, but you can also see it selected. Okay, with our rectangle selected, let's have a look at the other options. So we're just going to click on here. There's our stroke options. And we're just going to open up the more options and bring it over here so we can look at it. So right now we've got the mitre corner. What does that mean? It means that we've got the square corners there. Also notice it's on the inside under a line. So we can change it. See that the blue there? That's our shape. And that's on the inside. We can change it to the outside. Or we can put it in the center. See that? Now, there's other options that we can apply on here too. And in fact, to make it easier to see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a solid line just by clicking there. Notice that by default, it puts it back into this inside. We're going to put it in the center. And now we're going to look at the corners. So right now, we've got a mitered corner, which is a square corner. We can change it. We can have a rounded corner. And see that, how it's kind of rounded now? And we can also kind of do this little cutoff corner. It's like an edge little angle. So here's the thing about the corner. Let me go to the rounded corner. If I go to the outside, notice the rounded corners show nicely. They also show nicely in the middle. However, if we go to the inside, those rounded corners are not going to work. So if you can't find the rounded corners and you think it's a bug, it's not actually a bug. It's just that you've got to put that on the center or the outside for those rounded corners to work. So let me just show you there. We align that. Let's put it in the middle. Rounded corners are now solved. So as you can see, using the dashes and the lines are a lot of fun, but there's a lot of little idiosyncrasies that you need to be aware of. Um, let me show you another option right now. I'm just going to hit Control-0, and I'm just going to get rid of these three. I'm just going to select them and get rid of them. And I'm going to grab the pen tool here, and we're going to make sure that we've got the pen set to a shape. And why don't we just do a shape around her just for fun? So I'm just going to click, and I'm just drawing with the pen. By the way, if you want to know how to use the pen tool, I've got another tutorial that shows in depth exactly how, even if you're a beginner, I know a lot of people are confused by this tool. By the way, I hit the Alt key or the option. I can change direction there. See that? Check out that tutorial. I'm going to link it underneath and also in a card where you can go in and find out how to use the pen tool. Let's go here. And I'm just going to click off the canvas to make sure I can just kind of Finish that. All right, obviously, this is not what we want. We want to set our fill to transparent, and then we're going to set our stroke to a nice red color. And how thick do we want it? Well, let's go in here. And because we've got this filled shape, we can actually just choose our size very easily now. And it's going to fit perfectly in here. Very easy to use. And we're going to go to our dash lines. If we want to change the size of those dash lines, let's go to our options. And why don't we make these dashes smaller? Let's make them two and we'll make the gap one. So we're going to have a lot more of them. In fact, why don't we go one and yeah, 0.5. So we're going to have these like that. So we can see we've got our dashes like that. So very, very easy to use. Now I'm going to show you how to take that path and apply different shapes to it. We could do dots, we could do rectangles, or we could do other shapes. And this also works on any version of Photoshop. So let me show you now. First thing we want to do is create a brush. So why don't we just create a new document? We're just going to choose new. And why don't we just create that right now? We'll get rid of the background. What we do is just create a new layer above it and get rid of that. Okay. 
So why don't we grab something, I don't know, let's make a square right now and we're gonna fill it with black. I'm just gonna choose black and I'm gonna fill it. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a diamond. So just hit Control T or Command T, go outside the edge there and I'm gonna drag it around like that. So now we've got a diamond. Okay, so we wanna crop this down to just the area with pixels. So we can go under image and we're gonna grab trim. Transparent pixels, okay. Got the whole thing selected, great. I'm just gonna make a selection around there and choose edit, save as a brush preset. So let's save this brush and we're gonna call it diamond. And click okay. Excellent, now we've created that. Let's go back to our thing here. And what I'm gonna do is I just wanna get this path here. So we're just gonna click on that path. But first of all, let's go down here, grab our path selection tool, make sure it's selected there. Notice we don't see the handles, click until we see the handles. Excellent. Now we're gonna go under paths here. And with that path selected, make sure you've got those around there, see that? With that path selected, we want to make a copy. Now don't click there because it's not going to work. What you need to do is go up here and choose to save the path. And we're going to click OK. Now we've got a save path. Go back to our layer. So now we want to paint with that path on the new layer. So we've created that layer. Let me explain why I created the duplicate of the path. Because if you look at it right now and we look under our layer and we go to our paths, there's the one that we copied is visible. Let me pop out the layers panel so you can see them together. If I was to turn this on and click on that layer, you'll see that shape. But the minute I go to a different layer, notice it disappears. So I'm going to hide that. So we're going to be using our duplicate now to paint onto here. So with this new layer selected, we're going to click on here for our shape. Notice our path appears. Now we've got a couple of options here. This will fill the shape. And this one here will add a stroke around the edge with the currently selected brush. So make sure that brush is on and all the settings we have on that brush are good to go. We click on that stroke and look at that. And of course, if we go into the paths, we click away, it hides the path. And there we were able to add our irregular shape to our path. So as you can see, we've added diamonds around the path and there's no other way to do that. Now you can do this with all kinds of different shapes. So create different types of brushes, but you know, we could do love hearts, we could do text, we could do all kinds of things with this. Um, so anyway, is this something new that you're learning? If so, let me know in the comments underneath. Uh, by the way, if you like this tutorial, smash that like button into dust. I do a new tutorial at least once a week. If you want to get that and learn all about Photoshop and Lightroom, hit the subscribe button right now and that notification bell so you become part of the cafe crew. By the way, a little announcement here. My book I did on drones is now in Chinese. So I'm really excited that the Chinese version of my book has come out. Um, so if you're in mainland China, you want to learn about flying drones and shooting and processing drones, you can grab it there. I also, of course, have the English version, which is the Photographer's Guide to Drones, which is available in the rest of the world. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.